Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayana, received a phone call from his Canadian counterpart, Francois Philippe Champagne. The two sides reviewed bilateral relations and means to further develop joint cooperation in the interest of both countries. They also noted the international efforts exerted to face COVID-19, in addition to discussing the latest regional and international developments of mutual concern. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Al Hamidan, has stressed the importance of employers' preventative efforts and precautionary measures to ensure workers' protection. Through commitment to the social distancing standards at work sites and labor accommodation, as well as the implementation of the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health and the relevant authorities in order to contribute effectively to curbing the spread of the novel coronavirus COVID-19, in line with the directives of the Government Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister. The Minister commended the efforts being exerted by the Interior Ministry, hailing the advanced level of the ongoing cooperation and coordination between the Labour and Interior Ministries to implement precautionary measures and combat the spread of COVID-19 at Labour camps. The Minister of Labour and Social Development indicated that many employers had already provided new accommodation when needed for their workers to reduce overcrowding at Labour accommodation, noting that as many as 8,011 workers have been provided with new accommodation at their work establishments or companies. Bahrain's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Vice Speaker of the British House of Commons, Nigel Evans. The meeting discussed the close historical relations between the two countries dating back to more than two centuries and the importance of seeking to strengthen their relations in all fields, especially with the imminent completion of Britain's exit procedures from the European Union. Evans underlined in the video conference meeting the existing bilateral relations, noting Bahrain's progress in all fields, including the parliamentary action. He also praised the successful experience of Bahrain in combating the coronavirus pandemic as well as the efforts to help citizens and residents alike, stressing the need to benefit from the Bahraini experience. For his part, Sheikh Fawaz praised the depth of the existing friendship between the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Bahrain, which are based on principles of respect, appreciation, exchange of visions and joint coordination on various regional and international issues of common concern. He stressed Bahrain's keen desire to advance the relations at all levels, mainly trade, economy, tourism and investment. The Financial and Economic Affairs Committee at the Shura Council, chaired by Khaled Al Masqati, affirmed that it will continue its efforts to achieve more achievements and development of legislations related to the financial and economic field in the Kingdom. The statement was made as the committee reviewed its achievements during the second session of the fifth legislative term. The committee discussed issues referred to it by the Shura Council, where a set of important recommendations were adopted to support the national economy and to support the efforts of the government in this regard. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of the active coronavirus cases reached 4,914 with 291 new cases reported and 5,811 recoveries. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hand with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces wherever possible. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has recorded 1,618 new coronavirus cases, raising the total number of the corona cases to 83,384. A total of 58,883 individuals have recovered so far. The Saudi Ministry of Health said that 22 people who had previously tested positive for the virus had died, raising the death toll to 480. Most of the newly detected cases were reported in the cities of Riyadh, Jeddah and Mecca. Saudi Arabia has lifted some restrictions on movement for residents within the country and is now allowing travel between its provinces. Kuwait recorded 1,008 new infections over the last 24 hours, raising the total cases to 26,192. The Kuwaiti Ministry of Health confirmed a total of 10,156 recoveries, while the death toll rose to 205 after five new fatalities were recorded. Most of the newly confirmed cases are Kuwaiti nationals, and the remaining cases are expatriates within the region and abroad. Most individuals who tested positive over the last 24 hours had contracted the virus through contact with other infected people. 
In the United Arab Emirates, the newly announced curfew's timing between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. does not affect Dubai's shorter curfew, which lasts between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Dubai police stress that anyone who leaves their home during the curfew timings between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. without a movement permit will be fined 3,000 dirhams. The UAE had announced adjusting its nightly curfew starting from May 30th, restricting public movement as the authorities will be conducting sanitization operations. Food outlets, cooperatives, grocery stores, supermarkets and pharmacies are permitted to open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oman confirmed 603 new coronavirus cases over the last 24 hours, taking it total to 10,423. The Omani Ministry of Health also confirmed that the number of COVID-19 recoveries rose to 2,396 and the death toll reached 42. Of the new cases reported, 343 are for foreign nationals, while 216 are Omanis. Individuals are urged to adhere to preventative measures implemented by the Omani government in order to slow the spread of the virus. Oman announced it would end its lockdown in the Muscat province starting today, including in the capital. Also, 50% of employees are expected to return to their offices beginning May the 31st. Egypt registered 1,289 new coronavirus cases and 34 deaths, making another record of daily increases on both counts despite stricter curfew rules. The total number of fatalities rose to 879 and confirmed cases to 22,082, of which 5,511 have recovered. Infections rose this week during the Eid al-Fatr celebrations, despite the government changing curfew timings and banning public transport for six days since Sunday. Egypt's top medical union has warned of a complete collapse of the country's health system, accusing the health ministry of negligence and failing to protect health workers from the coronavirus. A British infectious disease expert and member of the UK government's scientific advisory group, Professor John Edmonds, has spoken out to say that the loosening of lockdown measures in England was dangerous. From Monday, a group of up to six people from different households will be allowed to meet outside in parks or private gardens, so long as two-meter distances are kept. Some primary school children will be able to return to school, while the government launched its contact tracing system earlier this week. Professor Edmonds expressed concern over the country's ability to contain the spread of the coronavirus under these new measures. It's risky um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think the reproduction number is only just below one. Um, and so there's not a lot of room for maneuver. And um, so small changes can put that reproduction number up above one. So I think that's the first thing. I think the other more important thing is that we still have a lot of cases um, here in this country. So the numbers of infections that we have is about 8,000 new infections every day in England alone. Uh, and that doesn't, and that's in the community. There, there's more infections that, are, that wouldn't be counted from that. Uh, that's from the ONS study. And there's more infections that are happening in hospitals and care homes and other enclosed settings, which wouldn't be included. So that's, in my view, quite a high incidence. Scientists in China working on a vaccine for the new coronavirus said they are 99% sure it will be effective. The vaccine is being developed by a Beijing-based biotech firm, Sinovac, which claims it is currently in stage two trials with 1,000 participants in clinical trials. The firm is in talks to carry out the final stage three trials in the United Kingdom. Sinovac is also building a commercial plant in another part of China with the intention of delivering 100 million doses when the vaccine gets final approval for mass rollout. However, Sinovac is not recommending distribution to the whole population, instead focusing on health workers and the elderly who will be the first to receive the vaccine. An unarmed Palestinian was killed by Israeli police near Jerusalem's old city. Israeli police claimed the man was carrying a suspicious object that looked like a pistol and ran away when ordered to stop. The man was unarmed. The shooting came a day after Israeli soldiers killed a Palestinian in the occupied West Bank, whom they said had tried to ram them with his vehicle. Tensions have risen in recent weeks as Israel has pressed ahead with plans to illegally annex large parts of the occupied West Bank. 
Protests continued in the U.S. city of Minneapolis, where the police killing of George Floyd sparked widespread demonstrations and anger. The U.S. National Guard and police were seen lined up in the streets as the Pentagon took the rare step of ordering the Army to put several active duty U.S. military police units on alert to deploy to Minneapolis later in the day. Unrest spread across dozens of U.S. cities following Floyd's death, who died after an officer pressed a knee into his neck while taking him into custody. Peaceful protest picked up steam as darkness fell, with thousands of people ignoring a curfew to walk the streets in the southern part of Minneapolis. Some cars were set on fire in scattered neighborhoods. Business break-ins began, and eventually there were large fires. About 100 people were involved in a shootout in the town of Bravari, just outside the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. The incident took place in a parking lot where rival groups competing for control of bus routes to Kiev clashed with each other. Police arrived shortly after the incident broke out, detaining 10 armed men. At least three persons involved in the shootout were wounded. The clash was a result of the non-transparent distribution of bus licenses by Kiev region officials for regional bus operators. The European Union criticized China for asserting more control over Hong Kong, warning the move would have an impact on relations between them, but ruled out taking any action against China. The criticism came after a video conference between EU foreign ministers where they weighed the need for a tougher policy on China against the damage it might do to business ties between the Asian economic giant and the world's biggest trading bloc. The 27 EU nations are often divided in their approach to China, but Beijing's opposition and its imposition of national security law on Hong Kong seems to have united them. Hong Kong's pro-democracy opposition sees the move as an assault on the territory's autonomy, and the United States has called on China to back off the security law. A barber in the Russian city of Kostroma is celebrating a return to work by attempting a world record, 48 hours of non-stop haircuts. A ring of a bell marks every hour in barber Vladislav Demidovich's long 48-hour shift as the barber attempts a marathon of haircuts, more than 80 in total. Staff at the saloon first planned to include all barbers so they could take turns, but the barber decided to attempt the feat by himself. The list of the customers was drafted beforehand, so the process would not run without any interruption. To mark the end of this 48-hour record attempt, Demidovich sits in the customer's chair and cuts his own hair. The whole 48 hours were live streamed via online platforms and the barber shop plans to send the footage to Guinness World Records to determine whether Demidovich has broken the world record. 